this video is being sponsored by Book of the Month. Hi friends, today I will be sharing with you all of the books that I have read this year. So it's going to be quite the lengthy wrap up. And some of these might be surprising. Hi friends, my name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be filming, the sun is out, there are no lawn mowers at the moment, my two cats are chilling, so it's going to be an interesting time filming. It's the last time they were both hanging out with me and they knocked over the camera, but they're just so cute, so it's fine, we'll make it work. Today I will be sharing with you all of the books that I have read so far this year. So far I have read 20 books, um, but before we get into all of the reviews, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. So Book of the Month is a fast growing online book subscription service. Every single month, their team of experts actually curates a selection of different books for you to choose from. And their book selection actually ranges from adult contemporary fiction to historical fiction, nonfiction, fantasy, memoir. The range is so freaking good. I feel like there's always a book every single month that everyone can vibe with. But if for some reason you are not vibing with the selection, you can always skip risk free or you can choose from their backlog list selection. I love Book of the Month. I have been working with them for such a long time now, and I have found so many favorites from them, including The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, The Ex-Hex, and The Inheritance of Arcadia Divina, just to name a couple. And this month, the selection is so freaking good. We've got The Good Left Undone by Adriana Trigiani, True Biz by Sarah Novick, Bittersweet by Susan Kane, Like a Sister by Kelly Garrett, and Kake by Vashnavi Patel. And while all of the books sound amazing, this is the one that I would personally pick for the month because it is an adult fantasy and the story sounds really, really good. She basically finds power for herself by going through these sacred texts and she turns herself from a princess to a warrior and a diplomat and it sounds really, really good. If you're interested at all in checking out Book of the Month, you can check out all of the links down in my description and you can also use my code Alexandra to get your very first book box for only $9.99. I highly highly recommend book of the month. I love them so much. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and get back into the recent reads wrap up. Okay. So the way I would like to do wrap ups on my channel this year are to do them in increments of 10 books. However, I missed the first increment and somehow I have already read 20 books. So I'm fitting all 20 books into one video. So for the sake of time, I'm going to try my best to summarize each book in just one to two sentences and then give an overall sentence on on like my exact thoughts and feelings. I've also decided to put every single book on this list in ascending order. So we're starting with my lowest rated book and then we're going all the way to my highest rated book. So we're starting with like number 20 and we're going all the way down to my number one favorite book of the year so far. And in addition, I don't have a single book on this list that is less than three stars. Uh, having said all that, let's go ahead and get started with number 20. So number 20 on this list is going to be Cloud Atlas by David. Mitchell and this is an adult literary fiction and it is also categorized as experimental fiction. And right off the bat, we are starting off with one of the most complicated books and so I will be taking a little bit of extra time to explain this one because uh, she's complicated. This particular book is actually told in a set of six different novellas. The very first half of the book are five novellas and each novella is broken in half. So we only get the first half of every single novella. In the very middle of the the book is the sixth novella, which is the only novella that is told from start to finish. And then from there, we kind of crescendo down into all of the other halves of the novels. While each novella's story is different in voice, tone, style, and narration, as well as genre, every single one are actually connected to depict themes of human connection, the importance of art, and also the horrible repercussions of the cycles of colonialism. The protagonists in this range from journalists to musicians to clones, and all are working together to present this overall mosaic of an imagined history of humanity. The experimentation and overall themes of this book, in my opinion, are five star worthy, and I especially really, really loved how it connected at the very end of this. However, I didn't always connect to his writing, and 
At times, it read as dull and slightly pretentious. However, I still believe that it is really, really worth the read, um, especially if you're interested in any of those themes. Next up at number 19, we have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, which is an adult contemporary fiction. This particular book is following Lily. Lily moves to a new city and meets a dashing surgeon named Ryle, and the two form a connection. And during their connection, she also reestablishes a friendship from her past with a man named Atlas. If you're picking this up thinking that this is going to be a sexy little romance triangle, I have to tell you, it's not. However, if you're interested in a hard-hitting contemporary that really delves into, I think, abuse in a way that's really well done, I think you might really enjoy this book. Next up, number 18 is Beautiful World, Where Are You? And this is by Sally Rooney, and this is an adult literary fiction. This book is told in alternating perspectives between best friends, Alice and Eileen, who are keeping in contact via email. And through their email correspondence, we are seeing their views on a wide range of topics from love to loss to climate change, politics, sex. I mean, basically anything that I think a 20 something year old woman would want to discuss, it's discussed in here. This is a no plot, just vibes kind of book. So if that is your jam, I think you would really, really like this. Out of the three books that Sally Rooney has written so far, this is my third favorite. I actually prefer the other two, but I'm still really, really glad that I read it because her writing is so beautiful and there were so many wonderful quotes in this as well. I will say this though, I absolutely hate Felix with the passion of a thousand fiery suns. I hate that guy. Okay, coming in at number 17, we have a poetry collection from Billy Collins, and this is Sailing Alone Around the Room. And this is kind of a compilation of different poems from his previous poetry collection. So if you are looking for kind of like a sampler of his work, I feel like this is a great place to start. As a whole, I feel like the collection tonally reads very different from his earlier works to his later works. And my favorite poems from this were the ones that felt a little bit surreal, and they read almost like daydreams. Billy Collins does this really, really interesting method in his earlier works in particular, where he starts off with a scene from everyday life, and then he adds different elements to make it seem almost like magical realism or surrealism, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. My favorite poem was probably The Lesson because it reminded me a lot of Emily Dickinson. So it says, in the morning when I found history, snoring heavily on the couch, I took down his overcoat from the rack and placed its weight over my shoulder blades. It would protect me on the cold walk into the village for milk and the paper, and I figured that he would not mind, not after our long conversation the night before. How unexpected his blustering anger when I returned covered with icicles, the way he rummaged through the huge pockets, making sure no major battle or English queen had fallen out and become lost in the snow. And I specifically love this because it really reminds me of Emily Dickinson and how she personified death as a person. And I love how Billy Collins did that with history and made history a person with these overcoats and large pockets. It was just very almost cinematic in my head. Like I could really picture it and it was a really cool image. So there is that one. I do recommend his collection. I loved it a lot. Next up, we have another poetry collection and this one is from Jericho Brown and it is called The Tradition and it won the Pulitzer Prize and it won for a reason, you guys. This poetry collection is so un unbelievably beautiful. It's depicting Jericho Brown's past and his home life and different things in America that he's experienced. And it's so unbelievably beautiful and powerful and made me cry. And I thought it was so gorgeous. My very favorite poem is one called Hero and it's a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna read you my very favorite lines. She never knew one of us from another. So my brothers and I grew up fighting over our mother's mind. Like sun colored suitors in a Greek myth we were willing to do evil. It's so unbelievably beautiful and melodic when you read it out loud. It literally sounds like music and it's absolutely so powerful and stunning and I love it so much. And next up we have A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair, which is an adult romance and it is also a Hades and Persephone's retelling. In this particular retelling, Persephone is actually a journalist and she discovers Hades at his club one night. And Hades actually owns like this huge club where it's kind of like 
half club, half gambling, and he loves to make these bets with mortals that seem almost impossible. And Persephone decides to write an article about Hades, and then she accidentally enters into a bet with him herself. It is very, very fun. It's a very, very light romance read, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Next up, we have Open Water, and this is by Caleb Azuma Nelson. And this is an adult contemporary fiction, literary fiction, and I would also categorize this as a little bit of a romance too. So this is a book that is told in the second perspective, which I actually was not used to reading. I almost never read books in the second perspective. So instead of reading something from a character's perspective, like I went here, I went there, or in the third perspective where we're hearing, he went to the store, she went to the store. Instead, it's told as you. So you are the main protagonist. So you get up, you think about her, you make a quesadilla at 2 a.m. even though you know you'll regret it. I did make a quesadilla at two in the morning last night and I did actually regret it. It was good though. So this is a love story. It has so many wonderful themes of that kind of gray area with best friends where you're in love with them, but the friendship is so important and sacred to you that you don't actually want to ruin it with sex, but at the same time you have those feelings and so you're willing to risk it. My cat is really excited about this book as well, if you can hear him. And it also explores racial tensions in the UK. I just felt like it was really, really well done. I thought it was really beautiful. And Caleb Azuma Nelson's writing actually read like poetry. It was one of the most beautiful, well-written books I've ever read ever. I highly, highly recommend picking it up. I feel like it just is very powerful and a very needed story and I loved it so much. Next up we have a new release and that is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Serrell and this is an adult contemporary story. This is about Katie whose life is completely shattered when her mother passes away. Her mother is her best friend and so when she dies she doesn't really know what to do. She decides to actually go onto this Italian vacation that they were supposed to go on together to kind of grieve her mom and when when she goes to Italy, she actually finds that she has gone back in time to the summer that her mom is just about to have her basically. And they become best friends one Italian summer for like kind of like the first time for her mom, but the last time for Katie. It's really beautiful, it's really emotional, and I highly recommend it for this summer, especially if you can't travel to Italy. Read this with some pasta and like, you're good to go, you know? Also bring some Kleenex, cause you will cry. Okay, coming in at number 12 is Lonely Castle in the Mirror, and this is by Mizuki Sujimura. And this is a Japanese translated fiction, and I believe that it is in the category of like adult and young adult fiction. This particular book is following a group of children and they have all stopped going to school for a variety of different reasons. And while they are staying home, all of them actually find portals to this magical castle. They go into their portals and they find that at this magical castle, they can all basically hang out every single day and they can all look for this item. And whoever finds this item first actually is granted a magical wish. I was hooked right away and I was super, super intrigued. The main themes of this are bullying and I feel like it is done so so incredibly well. Don't pick this up if you are more interested in the fantasy aspect because I felt like the fantasy aspect was more of just like a placeholder or like a setting. I felt like the magic in this was really, really light and more whimsical than like fantasy, if that makes sense. I loved the ending. It made me cry so freaking much and I think it's worth the read, although you should know that it gets a little bit slow in the middle, but definitely worth the read. Next up is another new release and this is Gallant by V.E. Bob, and this is, I think, YA gothic literature, and also it has fantasy elements in it as well. This book is following Olivia, who actually cannot speak. She uses sign language to communicate, and she believes that she is an orphan until this mysterious letter comes to her at this all-girls kind of orphanage, where the letter reads that her uncle is alive and he is inviting her back to the manor where her mother grew up. When Olivia arrives, however, she learns that her uncle actually never sent her that letter. And so we've got kind of a mystery right off the bat of like who sent her that letter and what are all of the secrets of this manor. And it's perfect if you love gothic literature. And I feel like it's actually also the perfect read for spring because there's a lot of mention of like gardens and flowers. So if you're interested in gothic, you're interested in fantasy and you're interested in like a spring read, I think this is like a winner. I freaking loved this book. Okay, number 10 is going to be The Paris Apartment by Lucy 
Folly or Foley, and this is an adult mystery set in Paris. This book is following Jess, who is down on her luck, and decides to stay with her brother who is living in Paris at the moment. However, when she gets to her brother's apartment, she discovers that he is not there. And when she starts asking questions about where he might be, all of his neighbors seem to have something to hide. This personally is my favorite Lucy Folly yet. I thought it was so interesting, so well done, so compelling. I listened to the audio. I absolutely highly recommend the audio because it's a full cast and it was so much fun. I also read this for Gabby's live show and I had so much fun discussing this with her and with everyone who showed up. And yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed this. I thought this was a really great mystery. Next up is number nine, which is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And this is by Talia Hibbert. And this is an adult contemporary romance. So the book is actually following Danica Brown, which is one of my new favorite characters of all time. And Danny is a very, very independent woman. She is going places. She's getting her PhD. She's a professor. She's also a little bit afraid of commitment in relationships. Enter Zaf, her best friend and security guard who works where she works. One day there is a fire drill and Zaf actually rescues her from an elevator that gets stuck. And someone records him carrying her out of the building and it goes viral. They decide to have a little bit of fun with this and fake dates and it gets pretty steamy. This book will absolutely make you believe in love again. I thought it was the perfect romantic comedy. So if you were looking for something that's going to make you laugh, but also is going to make you feel like that aww feeling, this is the one. Okay, number eight is going to be Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. I finally read it, totally worth the hype. I think it's one of the best middle grades I've ever read. It is a middle grade, it is a middle grade fantasy, and I love it so much. This book is following Amari, and Amari's brother Quentin has gone missing, and he actually sends her a package. She opens it up, and it is actually an invitation to go to the secret society. She goes to the secret society and finds out that she actually has to try out to be a part of it, and she learns that magic actually exists. And as cool as that is, she only has one mission, and that is to find her brother Quentin. I thought that this was so fast-paced, so well written. The characters were amazing. The storyline was incredible. I felt like it had so many important themes that I think a lot of kids will really get a lot out of, but also it was just so entertaining. If you love Nevermore in particular, I think you're gonna love this book. It was absolutely incredible. And next up we have, I think one of the best romances I've ever read in my entire life, and that is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is an adult, very adult <laughs> romance, and this is also another Hades and Persephone retelling. And this retelling is just epic. I mean, if you love fantasy, if you love political intrigue, if you love the fake dating trope, you're just really gonna like this. It's so steamy, it's very, very spicy, and I really enjoyed it so much. I loved the plot. It was just really, really good. I highly recommend it. Number six is going to be The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina, and this is by Zoraida Cordova. And this is an adult literary fiction and also a magical realism book. This book is following Orquidea Divina, who is our main character and her life. So we get to see a lot of her backstory as well as all of her descendants. So specifically, we focus in on three of her grandchildren who have come to collect an inheritance before she passes away. And it's about how all of their lives are connected. It's so beautiful, but I actually can't say a lot about it because I'm vlogging my experience reading this and I, I don't wanna give too much away. So I can't say a lot, but just know it's like maybe one of the best books I've ever read. It's so good. <laughs> Number five is Where the Drowned Girls Go. And this is by Shauna McGuire. So this is an adult novella and it is also a fantasy and it is part of this larger novella series, the Every Heart a Doorway series or the Wayward Children series. The series as a whole is following children who have come back from magical worlds and they all reside in this sort of like private school so that when children come back from like Neverland or Narnia or Wonderland and they're confused as to why they're back in this world, they have a safe space to kind of be themselves and wait for their worlds to open back up for them. This book, however, is following Cora. So Cora has already gone to her world and she wants to go back. But in another book in this novella series, she accidentally goes into another world. And I don't wanna like 
say too much because I don't want to spoil that book. But she goes into another world and it's not her world. That world is bad. It's like a very scary world where there are these things called the drowned gods. And ever since she has come back from that world, Korra has been haunted by the drowned gods who are trying to come and get her. And because she is so afraid of the drowned gods, she actually asks to transfer to another school. There's actually a school that has a totally different approach. Instead of embracing the students' differences and letting them you know, be unique in who they are, the school actually tries to convince these students that they never went on any adventures at all and they try to make these students normal. I feel like the themes in this are so impeccable. I think this is Shauna McGuire's best book to date. It's so beautiful, it's so well done, it made me cry and I just felt like the representation in it was just like so well done, it was so wonderful, it was just really good. The overall theme is basically just to be yourself and there's no such thing as like normal and I, I loved it. I loved it so much. I thought it was great and it's like one of my new favorite books of all time. Amazing. And then finally, spots four through one all belong to a series that I have recently become obsessed with and that is the Fence series. This is a YA graphic novel contemporary fiction series and I am I am so obsessed with this like I cannot even tell you. It's written by C.S. Bacat and Johanna the Mad and then I think that it's illustrated by Joanna Lafuente. The series itself starts off following Nicholas who is our main protagonist and Nicholas is the illegitimate son of this world-class fencer and he decides that he wants to like earn his respect kind of in like a stick it to you moment and he decides he wants to become like the world's best fencer or like a really, really good fencer to get this guy's attention. Nicholas enters into a tournament and he meets this guy who is kind of a little bit of a tool to Nicholas and he calls him Zero and he's like, you're not worth my time, you're not a good fencer and then he proceeds to kick Nicholas's ass. Nicholas gets really pissed off and he's like, okay, this guy is my new mortal enemy. Not only do I have to prove all this stuff to my dad, I also now have to kick this guy's ass. So he decides to transfer to a school and it's like a very expensive preparatory school but he's trying to get onto the fence team so that he can have like a full scholarship to the school and when he gets there he is assigned a roommate who is also going out for the fencing team and his roommate is his mortal enemy <laughs> I can't, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. At the moment, it's kind of more of like an enemies to friends situation, but I'm getting the vibes that there could be a little bit more. And it's just, it's, you guys, I have never been so like addicted to a series I in forever, in such a long time, because it's not just their storyline. Like all of the characters, you get to know them and every single one of them has like the coolest storyline and the coolest personality. It's funny, it's engaging, it's fast paced, could not recommend Fence more if you love graphic novels. Even if you don't, please pick it up. It's just, it's so good. And I think you guys, that is it. Those are all 20 of the books that I have read so far this year for my wrap up. Thank you again so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. All of their links will be down below. I highly recommend them, you guys. I love Book of the Month so much and I love working with them so much. So again, thank you so much to them for sponsoring the video. Please let me know though, have you read any books recently that you would like to tell me about? What did you think about the books that I've discussed? Are there any that are intriguing to you? And then and finally, if you have made it to this part of the video, please leave me the heart emoji. Any color you want. I just love the heart emoji. But I think that's it for now, you guys. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes. Like it's something in the air at the time. Don't know why. Dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat